Welcome back. As we promised, we are going to uh, tackle one of uh, the presidential activities which took place recently as President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi participated uh, via video conference upon an invitation uh, um, uh, from his American counterpart Joe Biden um, in a number, uh, with a number of heads of state and government and UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. This was in uh, the uh, major economies forum on energy and climate to shed more light on uh, the important event or the important gathering which uh, uh, is really uh, coming as Egypt is still um, holding the presidency of the climate summit since we um, we managed to host the COP27 in Sharm el-Sheikh last uh, November. We are very much delighted to have uh, with us uh, via phone um, Dr. Megat Karamuddin, head of the Regional Renewable Energy Center. A very good morning to you Dr. Karamuddin. So before going into uh, the details of uh, the summit and uh, its importance, uh, let me see uh, or let me know your vision regarding um, the invitation by um, American President Joe Biden to President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi to participate in this very important gathering as Egypt is still shouldering its responsibility as a key player when it comes to climate change since, as I said, we hosted the COP27 last November here in Egypt and particularly in the Red Sea Resort of Sharm el-Sheikh. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this invitation reflects the leadership of Egypt uh, in terms not only of uh, being the president of the previous uh, COP27 uh, summit in Egypt, but also its leadership in uh, mobilizing the, uh, I would say, the international community, especially the African and Middle East uh, countries, uh, toward the causes of uh, climate change. And also reflect uh, how important Egypt, uh, the role Egypt is playing uh, in, in this regard. Uh, and uh, this is, in fact, uh, also a reflection of Egypt's commitment uh, to, to, to act and, in fact, to be, become more active uh, in the climate change negotiations to advance that, uh, the ambitions uh, mm. on balanced agenda based on the implementation of the different uh, recommendations that were elaborated over the past 30 years and the promotion of the just, appropriate, and uh, I would say accelerated implementation of uh, commitments mm. on the ground. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, this is a position of, that uh, Egypt is uh, uh, always expressing that we would like to accelerate the implementation and mobilize all resources toward that. Yes, and um, let me go to uh, what happened in Sharm el-Sheikh in November because um, a lot of results uh, should be positive results. But, you know, sir, when it comes to the implementation of uh, the, um, uh, the um, gatherings, um, of very important gatherings like that one, the loss and damage, the uh, uh, should-be um, commitment of the developed countries to help the developing countries as, for example, here in Africa, we are the least participating in the um, carbon emission, but unfortunately we are, um, we are paying the very dear price of what's going on in the developed countries. How do you see the reaction of the developed countries and how do you see um, uh, uh, the issue as now a must, I mean, it's not a luxury anymore. They have learned the lesson the hard way with all the natural disasters we are all living on Earth. How this can be implemented on the ground for the sake of humanity at large? Okay, uh, to be frank, yeah? they are stalling. <laughs> they are delayed. Yes, truly. Uh, in fact, from the early starts of uh, the negotiations on climate change, and with all the scientific, uh, I would say, proofs on this, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, some even major leaders in the world are trying to postpone uh, acting on the uh, on this important agenda. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in fact, they were trying to escape uh, from their responsibilities regarding, especially, uh, compensating the developing countries uh, and the uh, losses and damage that they are facing. Uh, but the reality that the key success of uh, Sharm el-Sheikh uh, uh, COP27 uh, conference, I mean, mm -hmm. that is, is putting this as a decision. And if you remember, it was delayed to the last minute, even we 
the closure of the event was postponed almost one day. But they were in closed sessions and in discussions, I think, for consecutive 24 hours. I mean, they have not stopped except for two hours in the last 24 hours of the conference, as far as I remember. And we were truly uh, leading all the developing countries mm -hmm. in expressing that we will not accept uh, that you keep delaying action on this. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the major achievement, from my point of view, the major achievement that Egypt should be brought up is booting for the first time the issue of loss and damage on the international agenda. This is it. Uh, uh, hello? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, this is the major achievement. And also, uh, uh, in fact, working now with United Arab Emirates uh, to have a very successful conference where we can establish a fund to somehow booting in this into action. To, 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 to translate the decision into concrete measures that would help the... This is exactly, country. sir, what I wanted to discuss. And uh, because of that, I mentioned loss and damage. Um, and I mentioned also um, this as one of the important points which were tackled in the speech of the president in this important gathering. I'd like here to echo what you have said regarding the continuous cooperation between Egypt and the United Arab Emirates as the United Arab Emirates is going to shoulder the responsibility of the COP28 later this year. Egypt uh, did not stop by the end of COP27. We are still exerting the utmost efforts to continue what we have started and to let COP28 build on what we achieved already in COP27, not to start from scratch. If you please elaborate. Uh, in fact, Egypt is working hand on hand with uh, with United Arab Emirates and also the COP. Uh, I would say the UNFCCC, the United Nations uh, bodies responsible for uh, climate change, and all the international com community. In fact, to continue the momentum that was created during the COP27, mm -hmm. and in the COP27, uh, we aim to achieve uh, the required balance between. Raising the ambition, the talks, <laughs> and achieving implementation while demanding the adoption of concrete measures. Mm. And he, these concrete measures are not that much difficult. It is increasing, increasing the reliance on renewable energy, accelerating the pace of reduction of uh, CO2 emissions, methane emissions, and adopting new alternative fuels that are not that polluting to the environment, and so on. So. Mm. In each sector and in each, I would say, country and on each region and when you go wider to the global context, there are well-known measures that can be adopted, but they require financial resources. Mm -hmm. sure. and, financial, mm -hmm. and these financial resources are what is lacking now. And mm -hmm. if you combine this with the current financial crisis worldwide, yep. the inflation crisis, yep. and the repercussion of the uh, Ukrainian uh, Russian situation yep. and so on uh, you can feel that the 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 the, 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 uh, the issue of climate change is not that much in the forefront of the discussion the discussion now is more about energy security about uh, again a recovery of economy etc mm -hmm. so what is happening now that we are trying why we are uh, solving the immediate crisis that is facing almost every nation in the world right now Yes. Not to forget that there are higher crews, and if we are not acting on this agenda, the losses will be much higher. So, sure. uh, so this is what is happening right now. Maintaining the momentum that was created, recovering from the repercussion of the uh, political and financial crisis worldwide, coming after Corona, of course, COVID-19, and, and so on. So now it is a difficult time. Where to put the financial resources and mm -hmm. what Egypt and Emirates and other countries are now are developing countries also and other uh, I would say countries who is conscious about the climate change issues what what we are saying is that you can invest in technologies for a better future for the for, for, human, for humanity while also achieving a good balance between uh, uh, financial rewards benefits, etc., and economic development. Meaning so we that are... we should uh, all um, cooperate together 
um, to pave the way for inviting investors to invade this relatively new market or relatively new field, which is investing in renewable energy projects. Is this what you're saying? Exactly, exactly. Great. Providing this is appropriate and sufficient financing to support the implementation Amen to of that. Let's, let's, this is the general, but let's go from the general to the specific to what's going on in Egypt in a specific regarding, for example, the goal of reaching 42% of our uh, energy uh, by 2030, it's going to be renewable energy. Is this goal hard or difficult to be achieved or it's within reach? It is within reach for sure. And in fact, uh, we were discussing with experts that this target is, can even uh, be more, increased more in the 20, by 2040 and 2050. Uh, mm -hmm. And nevertheless, for 42, the 42 percent by the year 2030 will translate into investment opportunities of more than 50 billion mm -hmm. US dollars. Yeah. So, so these are huge investment opportunities yeah. that Egypt is offering. So what we are saying that we are working the talk while expressing that we need to go into this track of energy transition, of uh, uh, reducing carbon footprint, and so on, we are putting, as uh, I would say, concrete, bankable projects, uh, more than 50 gigawatts of projects, mm -hmm. 50 billion US dollars of investment to the international, regional, and local investors to work together to realize this target. And we are offering, and now it is, shaping, I would say, the, the needed measures, uh, procedures, etc., to ensure the provision of, the, of, 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 of uh, I would say, the ecosystem that would allow investors to mm -hmm. come in Egypt in a low-risk environment. And while doing that, Egypt is also putting a strong emphasis on the importance of not only Egypt is doing that, but also the international community should collaborate in de-risking the investments worldwide. And, and this is leading us to say that Egypt can be easily renewable energy hub. And yes. this, is, um, this is going to be um, uh, something also within reach, according to all what you have said, according to our potentials, according to our uh, pivotal role regarding climate change, and also according, of course, to our geographic location. True? True, because... First of all, you, have, you are, of course, one of the sun -built countries, and this is well known, but mm -hmm. we are not alone on that. We have several countries all over the world that enjoy good solar radiation. Yeah. But beside this solar radiation, there are certain elements. If not there, the projects will not be bankable. First of all, do you have the infrastructure ready? Mm -hmm. I mean, electricity interconnection, great capacity to absorb renewable electricity, because we know renewable is fluctuating by nature. During the night, we do not have solar energy. Not all the time we have wind, etc. So, is your grid strong enough to uh, absorb these renewables and tolerate to the variable nature of electricity coming from there? Uh, do you have uh, the infrastructure in terms of uh, uh, transmission lines, in terms of transformer stations, in terms of roads, in terms also of uh, logistical issues regarding cranes, uh, regarding uh, uh, hubs, uh, I, I would say, uh, boards, I'm sorry, boards like what we have in Gulf, uh, in, in Suez Canal or in Alexandria, etc., that can accommodate for the transportation. And, and the sir, movement. above all, also, we, we do have the will, we do have the political will, and I think we started already, before all this happened, we started the uh, electrical linkage or connection between us and Jordan, between us and uh, Saudi Arabia, um, and also we have such a great relations with the north of the Mediterranean, um, with the tripartite, um, a cooperation between Egypt, among Egypt, Greece and Cyprus, all this together, I think it paved the way already for more joint action on the ground regarding renewable energy, particularly in the field of electricity, true? Absolutely, absolutely, you are 100% correct. Um, I mean, this is also uh, going to be something to be put into consideration, which we can build on. I mean, we are uh, not starting uh, from scratch in any so, field so of goals. You have to, I would say, the main drivers, but there are others, of course. Mm -hmm. First of all, your uh, national needs for, to, spark, to, 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 to accelerate the economic development. 
Yeah. So Egypt is expecting to increase its growth rate, the, the economy, with some, I would say, the GDP would increase for to 10, 12 percent in the coming few years, mm -hmm. uh, each year. So annually, so you have economic growth. I'm not, I'm not saying the recovery from the crisis that we are facing right now, but I'm looking into the future. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one thing. So you need to fulfill uh, the energy needs for this growth. Mm -hmm. And you are working on that by expanding your not only renewable, but also nuclear, uh, conventional, combined cycle, etc. This is one side. So you, have, you are providing a reliable energy mix that would allow you to grow nationally. But I wanted to, are to offering, focus are offering, on that, sir, if you permit but, me. And uh, Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, the, other that I, uh, the other driver, which yeah. is exporting your green energy. Mm -hmm. And here you are exporting the green component of the energy, the renewable part. Mm -hmm. And in this, you are working also on two tracks. You are working on electricity export, but you are also working on exporting green hydrogen. And exporting green hydrogen mean, means that you are not only exporting hydrogen as a gas, as a commodity in the international market, but you are exporting the green attributes of this. You are exporting... The Do you agree, component. sir, with the vision which is saying that green hydrogen is the future of renewable energy? It's the future of what we call power to X. Okay. Uh, what is power to X? Power to X is electrifying all sectors. Mm -hmm. Again, when you, hydrogen is being used in several industries, for example, ammonia, yes. uh, uh, fertilizers, steel industry, and uh, uh, petrochemical, pharmaceutical, and so on. So it is already a commodity in the international market with 100 million tons being traded worldwide each year. Mm -hmm. So, and this goes into what we call hard to abate industries. What is hard to abate? Industries that typically, typically are polluting the environment by CO2. Mm -hmm. So one, when you are using hydrogen that is green, coming from a renewable resources with electrolyzers, mm -hmm. this means that you are greening these industries which were difficult to green before, including mm -hmm. also, for example, the transportation sector. And you know, we are moving into uh, electric mobility, e electric cars, uh, electric trains, etc. So when you are powering this by green, green hydrogen or green electricity coming from renewable, you are also making the transport sector more green. Mm -hmm. And this means that you are putting power, the electricity, into everything that we are using right now. Yes. But you are not using polluting electricity, pollute, uh, the, the electricity that is coming from conventional resources, but you are using uh, electricity that is coming from a clean resource like renewable energy. Mm -hmm. So these are the two pillars, uh, national demand and export. And in the export, it is not only electricity, but also green hydrogen and other derivatives. By the way, when you are exporting green ammonia coming from hydrogen, you are exporting renewable electricity also. So because you are producing ammonia from hydrogen and the hydrogen is produced by uh, renewable electricity. Uh, very much complementary, I mean... Um, um, this is to look at the issue from a panoramic view, what, you, what you've uh, kindly uh, explained to us. Sir, uh, you know, the layman in the street, those who are not experts, you know, they are all the time thinking about our national projects as uh, consuming energy. And there is this kind of uh, uh, misunderstanding how we are going, for example, to have land reclamation for millions or for what, exactly 1.5 million families. How we are uh, going on with mega projects scattered all over Egypt and with the new fourth uh, uh, generation cities. How uh, I can see, I can say that in a very simple way that this is going on with that, coinciding with that. I mean, with the, putting into consideration that renewable energy is the future. Uh, uh, and in the same time, going through with national mega projects, they are going together hand in hand. Nothing can go without the other. Uh, when we were just uh, tens of years ago, <laughs> for me, 30 years ago almost, when we were studying uh, in the university, we always uh, thought of electricity as being like the blood in the human body. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine living without blood circulating? 
without this this is the, the reality of electricity. Without electricity, we will not be able to provide the simplest needs. Mm -hmm. And here I'm not only speaking about only mega projects, which would require, of course, uh, uh, dem a high demand for electricity. But I'm speaking about, for example, the healthcare services, hospitals. Can you imagine a hospital without electricity? <laughs> of course not. Can you imagine a school, university without electricity? <laughs> Can you imagine all our life now without our mobiles, without, and so on. So we are powering the life. It is not about, whenever we have surplus electricity, this means an opportunity to grow. It is not, uh, in fact, we have been part of the age of success in a certain, you remember in the early 90s, we had a success, a success story in the economic growth of Egypt. Mm -hmm. This was a good area that we paid all our debt and we uh, grow the industry grow and so on. And this was also, this was powered by the surplus electricity that we had at that time. Yep. And now what we are saying that with, with this surplus electricity, you have better opportunity to attract investment. No better investment. opportunity of life, to be accurate. Yes, Sir, uh, one final question and it's a yes or no question. We all knew since the Kyoto Protocol, Kyoto, Paris, Montreal. Now, are you optimistic about how the world is going to deal with those protocols and with climate change in general? Yes. Great. I'm optimist. This I'm optimist. is exactly what I wanted to hear. We should all be very optimistic because I think every person, every human being, should work for the sake of humanity at large and this is the responsibility of world leaders. Well, we were very much delighted to have with us Dr. Megat Karamadeen, head of the Regional Renewable Energy Center. Thank you very much for your input, sir. You are always an added value to our programs. Well, right after the short break, we are going to return back with more, so stay tuned.